Tao overflows. Krishnamurti during middle and later years. During the 1930s, Krishnamurti spoke in Europe, Latin America, India, Argentina, and the United States. In 1938, he met Aldous Huxley and two began a close relationship which endured for many years. They held common concern about the imminent conflicts in Europe, which they viewed as the outcome of the pernicious influence of nationalism. He did not speak publicly for a period of about four years between 1940 and 44. During this time, he lived and worked for Arya Bihar, which during the war operated as a largely self-sustaining form with its surplus goods donated for relief, relief efforts in Europe. Of the years spent in Uzai during the war and later years, he says, I think it was a period of no challenge, no demand, no outgoing. I think it was a kind of everything held in. And when I left Ozai, it all burst. Krishnamurti, however, broke the hiatus from public speaking in May 1944. With a series of talks in Ozai, these talks and subsequent ones were published by Krishnamurti Writings in Cooperation, the successor organization to the Star Publishing Trust. After the Star of the East organization was dissolved, this Krishnamurti Writings in Cooperation was established. This was to be the new central Krishnamurti related entry worldwide, whose sole purpose was the disseminate the teachings of Krishnamurti. He had retained the, con the contact with associates from India and in the autumn of 1947, he embarked on a speaking tour there, attracting a new following of young intellectuals. On this trip, he encountered Mehta sisters who became lifelong associates and confidant. The sisters also attended to Krishnamurti throughout a 1948 recurrence of the process at Utakman in India. In Pune 1948, Krishnamurti learned yoga, yoga practices with Ayangar. When Krishnamurti was in India after the Second World War, many prominent personalities came to meet him, including the then Prime Minister Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, in his meetings with Nehru, Krishnamurti elaborated at length on the teaching, saying in one instance, undergoing understanding of the self only arises in relationship, in watching yourself in relationship in, to people, ideas and things, to trees, the earth, and the world around you and within you. Relationship is the mirror in which the self is revealed. Without self-knowledge, there is no basis for right thought and action. Nehru asked him, how does one start? To this Krishnamurti replied, begin where you are. Read every word every phrase, every paragraph of the mind 
as it operates through the process of thoughts. Relationship is indeed the mirror. When you look at yourself through the relationship of mirror, you know how far you have progressed. When you are dealing with your husband, children, friends, parents, then the relationship mirrors your inner qualities. Krishnamurti continued speaking in public lectures, group discussions, and concerned individuals around the world. He met many prominent religious leaders and scholars, including Swami Venkatsanan, Anand Mahima, Lakshman Ju. He was the one, the Kashmiri Pandit, to whom it is attributed the Vigyan Bhairav Tantra, the script of Vigyan Bhairav Tantra. And that was mentioned by Zen flesh, Zen bones by Paul Reps. And in addition, he met many other persons. In India, he also met many sannyasis, the renunciates and monks throughout his life. In the early 1960s, he made acquaintance of the physicist David Hume, whom, whose philosophical and scientific concerns regarding the essence of physical world and the psychological and sociological states of mankind found parallels in Krishnamurti's philosophies. The two soon became close friends and started a common inquiry in the form of personal dialogues and occasionally in group discussions with other personalities and this continued for a period of two decades. Several of these discussions were published in the form of books and as part of part of books and introduced a wider introduced to wider audience among scientists to Krishnamurti's ideas. Although Krishnamurti's philosophy delved into the field as diverse as religious studies, education, psychology, physics, and consciousness studies, he was not then nor he was not then nor since well known in academic realms. Nevertheless, Krishnamurti met and held discussions with physicists like Fritz of Capra and George Sudarshan and others. In addition, he also met the psychiatrist. His long friendship with David Wohm went through a rocky intervals in later years and although they overcome their differences and retain friendship until Krishnamurti's death, the relationship did, did not begin to uh, previous intensity. There was a change. In 1970, Krishnamurti met several times with them the, the then Indian Prime Minister, Mrs. Indira Gandhi, with whom he had far ranging and in some cases very serious conversations. His biographer, Jayakar, considers his message in the meetings with Indira Gandhi as a possible influence in the lifting of certain emergency measures Gandhi had imposed during the period of political turmoil in 1970s. In 1984 and 85, Krishnamurti spoke to an invited audience in United States in New York under the auspices of 
basement in terrorist society chapter at the United Nations. In 1985, he visited India for the last time and held a number of talks which came to be known as his farewell talks and discussions between then and January 1986. These were his last talks including the fundamental questions he had been asking through the years as well as newer concerns about advancements in science and technology and their effects on humankind. Krishnamurti had commented to his friends that he did not wish to invite death but was not sure how long his body would last. And once he could no longer talk, he would have no further purpose to live. In his final talk on January 4th, 1986 in Madras, he began, he again invited the audience to examine with him the nature of inquiry, the effect of technology, the nature of life and meditation, and the nature of the creation. A few days before his death, in his final statement, he declared that nobody among either his associates or general public had understood what had happened to him. He added that the supreme intelligence operating in his body would be gone with his death, again implying the impossibility of successors. However, he stated that people could perhaps get into touch with somewhat if they live the teachings in prior discussions he had compared himself with Thomas Edison implying that he did not he did the hard work and now all that was needed by others was a flick of the switch. This is what happens with almost everyone. In October of 1985, he went from England to India and after that he suffered from exhaustion, fevers and weight loss. Krishnamurti decided to go back to Ozai on 10th of January 1986 after his last talks in Madras and he took a 24 hours flight that was needed. Once he arrived in Ozai, he underwent medical tests that revealed that he was suffering from pancreatic cancer. The cancer was untreatable, either surgery or otherwise. So Krishnamurti declared to go back to his home at Ozai where he spent his last days. Friends and professionals nursed him his mind was clear until the last moment. Krishnamurti died on February 17, 1986 at 10 minutes past midnight California time. In accordance to his wishes, no memorial service was conducted. His ashes were divided into three parts for Ozai, India, and England. In India, they were immersed in rivers Ganga at Varanasi, Gangotri, and in the ocean Adyar Beach. Thus, a legend, a chapter, a book that came from the Divine Library went back to the library, and that was the end of the physical life of Krishnamurti. <laughs>